You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories tonight. At the head of that list, a busy weekend for events all around Knoxville, hinting at a busy season ahead and important well, a very important one for the health of our local economy. While it doesn't look much like spring outside right now, the events are already getting started. Tonight's event, the Knoxville St. Patrick's Day Parade, just stepped off in the last few minutes, leaving from the intersection of Howard Baker Jr. Avenue and Hall of Fame Drive, heading across the bridge. Then they're going to be turning right and heading for what you're looking at right now, Gay Street. All the people lining up right now, waiting for the parade. From there, it'll head up to Depot Avenue. Our own Lori Tucker. Serving as an MC with Knoxville native, UT graduate turned comedian Leanne Morgan as the parade's grand marshal. All this pageantry is for a good cause. Proceeds go to Catholic Charities of East Tennessee. WATE is a proud sponsor. And right now we are bringing you live streaming coverage at WATE.com. We'll have more from the parade route for you tonight at 11 o'clock. But great to see everybody lining up there. It just stepped off a few moments ago. They'll be getting there soon. Well, the green festivities continue Sunday with the Lucky Kidney Run as a 6K or a one-mile walk you choose. Money raised from this goes to the Knoxville Kidney Foundation. It's also linked to Knox Shamrock Fest, which happens at 1 o'clock Sunday, also at World's Fair Park. You'll find live music, food, Irish dancing, more. The event goes until 5 o'clock. WATE, we're going to be there as well. And that's just a couple examples. Knoxville is also playing host to top college swimmers, teammates, coaches, and their families. Yesterday, the Swim and Dive Championships kicked off at the Allen Jones Aquatic Center on UT's campus. All of these things to do matter beyond green beer and championship medals. They help feed East Tennessee's economy. Visitors need hotel rooms, restaurants, locals spend money there as well, and it fuels the area's image as a travel destination or even a place to live. On to Top Golf, most importantly, and we're going to go back. But we've gone to the Market Square, we've gone to the Copper Cellar, Cellar, uh, Payton's Bar. We're staying at the Graduate, which is awesome because it's walking distance to the pool. Um, and we've just really walked around and seen what Knoxville is all about. We take a breath and then we go straight into another really eventful weekend with Dogwood's Chalk Walk, the Big Ears Festival, the Eagles are coming to town, and everything else that goes on. Festival season is here, event season is here, and it's just an exciting thing for us. At Visit Knoxville, it's an exciting thing for Knoxville. And you know, next weekend brings top-notch professional anglers for the Bassmasters Classic. We'll have more on that event for you later on in the newscast. Well, our next Big 7 story for you just into the WAT 6 on your side newsroom. Campbell County High School principal Ben Faust has been suspended without pay. This is according to Board of Education member Randy Heatherly, who tells us the suspension is pending the outcome of a Department of Children's Services investigation. Faust has hired attorney Greg Isaac's law firm to represent him. Isaac saying to us, quote, Principal Faust denies any allegations of wrongdoing or inappropriate conduct. The firm is conducting a comprehensive investigation to address the accusations and are confident that they will be resolved in the near future. Well, our Big 7 at 7 list rolls on right now with news of no settlement and the clash over Blunt Memorial Hospital. You know, we've been telling you that hospital management and county leaders have been at odds over Blunt Memorial's finances and direction. The hospital CEO has accused the county mayor of interference in his plan to put the hospital on the right track. The mayor's office recently tried to negotiate a new contract with UT Medical Center for operating Blunt Memorial. A judge ordered the two sides into mediation, but this morning, the hospital told us no settlement was reached and a confidentiality agreement keeps them from saying anything else. Of course, we'll be watching to see where the dispute goes from here. All right, our next Big 7 at 7 story for you, a ch the chance, a panel that has shed light on Tennessee's foster care system could disappear. House and Senate Majority Leaders William Lamberth and Jack Johnson filed a bill on behalf of the governor's office to dissolve the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth. The move comes after the Independent Commission released its annual State of the Child report, which detailed Tennessee's position as the worst state when it comes to foster instability in the country. The commission was established under the, an act the legislature passed back in 1988. It's been putting its annual State of the Child report out for at least over a decade now. Today, Representative Lamberth pushed back on the notion that the possible disillusion uh, is, a, is a result of the report, but not every Republican wholeheartedly agrees. 
I think they were doing fine um, operating as a quasi type of um, committee or agency. I'm fine with them operating like that. It's not because there's one report that's come out that has somehow or another highlighted something that wasn't already obvious, I think, to most of us on what was going on with DCS. What I support is uh, investing more in our children across the state and finding new and innovative ways to do that. There is no better example of just saying, you know, you called me out, you did your job, so I'm going to end you. That's what they're saying. Bill is scheduled for a discussion in two committees next week. We'll follow that for you. Moving along in our list, a big traffic alert coming up next week. Construction begins Monday in Green and Cock Counties. Highway 321 will be closed from the intersection of State Route 160 and Old Greenville Highway to just west of the intersection of St. Tide Hollow Road and Old Greenville Highway. Now, as we've been telling you, construction crews will be working to tie in the existing State Route 35 to the proposed Newport Bypass. A detour will be in place directing drivers through the work zone onto Old Greenville Highway way until the work is complete, which is, by the way, estimated to be sometime this September. Our next Big 7 at 7 story was breaking news last night right around this time. Since then, first responders giving the all clear. A tractor trailer was reportedly leaking at the TA truck stop along I-40 near Watt Road. The material leaking was peroxyacetic acid used to sterilize medical equipment. The spill was quickly contained and we're told there was minimal danger to the public.